tell you a secret. I heard a rumor. Someone from overseas is interested in buying up 7-Eleven and Starbucks in Malaysia. Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my fuck show. Where is this rumor coming from? Who owns 7-Eleven and Starbucks in Malaysia? Do you have skin in the game to make a profit for yourself? That's what I want to talk about today in case you haven't heard of it already. Actually, it's not a rumor per se. Since The Edge already reported the story in the newspaper more than a month ago. Theoretically speaking, if someone is interested in buying up assets from Berjaya Group, wouldn't that unlock value for shareholders? And that's good news for the share price? Let's take a quick look into SEM, Berjaya Food, and even Berjaya Corp share price. Mm, eh? No reaction, Poon. What's going on? Huh? It is said that a Taiwanese company is keen on the convenience store chain 7-Eleven and Starbucks franchises in Malaysia. If you are familiar with the story of how Tan Sri Vincent Tan got his McDonald's franchise for Malaysia, it's deja vu because apparently, the Taiwanese buyer has been writing to Berjaya several times to indicate its interest to start conversation with the group. Not sure what's going on behind the scene, but so far, there's no news coming from the group's official announcement to Bursa. So, it's Either the Taiwanese have been shut outside the door or something is brewing within like a nice cup of Starbucks Americano. Nonetheless, as investors, we need to know the value of our own investment. If it is true that someone all the way from Taiwan is keen to buy Berjaya's asset, why didn't we even bother to understand these businesses that are right at home? Why? 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 The key reason for that has already been answered in the previous video talking about Tan Sri Vincent Tan and Berjaya group of companies. In this video, we are going to focus on the assets that the Taiwanese are interested in, 7-Eleven and Starbucks. Nobody knows who this Taiwanese is since nobody really talk about it. But if we were to speculate, it must be somebody who is in a similar business to be able to appreciate the value of the assets. According to The Edge, and this makes perfect sense. It thinks that this Taiwanese buyer could be Uni President Enterprises Corp, a listed conglomerate that is the largest food production company in Taiwan. And to make this coincidence too good to be true, they also operate 7-Eleven and Starbucks in Taiwan. Honestly speaking, anyone who is willing to take on the challenge to untangle the complicated shareholding structure of Berjaya Group of Companies deserves a big thumbs up. You see, like what we discussed before, in the previous video, Berjaya has a complicated shareholding structure. 7-Eleven in Malaysia is parked under a listed entity SEM, which took Caring Pharmacy Group Berhad private in 2020. While most people have the impression that Berjaya owns and operates 7-Eleven Malaysia, the truth is they are only partially correct. Berjaya Corp owns just 8.5% of the company, while Tan Sri Vincent Tan, in his personal capacity, is the ultimate boss of SEM, holding a lion's share of 52%. Which means to say, there isn't much meat for you if you are a shareholder of Berjaya Corp. Meanwhile, it's an entirely different story for Starbucks Malaysia. The coffee chain is grouped under Berjaya Food together with Kenny Rogers and Jollibean. This time round, Berjaya Corp is the major shareholder of Berjaya Food with a controlling stake of 53%. Having said that, the biggest winner is still Tan Sri Vincent Tan because he directly and indirectly owns more than 62% of the company. Long story short, Berjaya is still pretty much a family-owned business. If you are running your own family business, you will know what I'm trying to say here. As the saying goes, blood is thicker than water. And when blood is in the business, as human beings, it's hard not to take care of their welfare before anything else. For Berjaya's case, the complicated shareholding structure kind of implies that. At one point, the top management tried to operate more professionally when they brought in Jalil to lead the group, the first non-family member CEO of Berjaya Corp. Unfortunately, he didn't manage to stay for long. I can only imagine how much convincing he needed to go through when meeting the board to share his business direction of the group. On the business side of things, what's so great about 7-Eleven and Starbucks? I don't know. Do you know that Starbucks is one of the very few businesses where it can have 
two stores in the same row of shops and both stores will still be packed with people? Cool, right? I wish I could own businesses like that. And needless to say, by just judging queues in any Starbucks store buying beverages that are priced more than a meal, close eyes also know these businesses are making money. And yes, Starbucks is the major contributor to Berjaya Food as a whole, generating 87% of the group's total revenue for FY21. On the other hand, 7-Eleven is a little bit more tricky in Malaysia. If you have been overseas, say Taiwan, Japan, or even closer to home, Thailand, I'm sure convenience stores are generally the place to go to grab snacks or to explore the country's food culture at an affordable price. In fact, that culture is somewhat brought into Malaysia where we could find a hint of Japanese flavour in Family Mart. And the same for CU stores as well for a taste of Korea. In OSC, their convenience store also has one more very important role to play. That is for the public to settle utility bills, to buy tickets and so on and so forth. Basically, they provide any services to do with giving convenience to the people. Well, duh! In the Malaysia context, would you rather buy a 5 ringgit nasi lemak from 7 Eleven or a 2 ringgit one from the mama next door? Not just that, just about everything in 7 Eleven is more expensive than the shop next door. It just doesn't make sense to buy things there unless it is past 12 midnight and nowhere else is open at that hour. It is said that operating convenience store for long hours is not economical because the traffic is too low to sustain the business during wee hours. Moreover, the stores are prone to crimes as well. That's why you notice not all my new stores operate 24 hours for that exact reason, to maximize efficiency and profitability. While some may argue that we could pay bills at 7-Eleven in Malaysia too, but honestly speaking, Post Malaysia is the place to go to pay bills for most Malaysians. Of course, 7-Eleven Malaysia has a wild card that overseas operators may not have. That is, the pharmacy chain business that it acquired in 2020 to diversify the income stream of the group. In FY 2021, more than a third of 7-Eleven Malaysia's revenue came from pharmaceutical segment. But is that what the buyer really wants? Or just a clean typical 7-Eleven's convenience store business that they are eyeing for? If so, do they really understand why we don't spend at 7-Eleven compared to people in other countries? What's the strategy there? Hmm. While it's easy to understand why the Taiwanese would want Starbucks Malaysia, why 7-Eleven? If the counterparty is really uni president, I would assume that this acquisition will complement them to distribute their retail and food manufacturing distribution business. Similar to the strategy that QL Resources brought Family Mart into Malaysia to create a new avenue for its food product to get sold on Family Mart's platform. If that's the case, perhaps we will see 7-Eleven to be rebranded as a Taiwanese-style convenience store. Eh? Interesting, whoa. I would be interested in buying Taiwanese instant beef noodles from 7-Eleven in the future. Assuming Berjaya is really in talks with the Taiwanese counterparty, and assuming you are the owner of this family business empire, how would you structure this deal? Or are they not even for sale? Tell us in the comments below. That's all we have for today. Hashtag fuck.